let's talk about Fred. Tell me a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? And why did you land in Utah? Those good questions. I don't know if it's super unique, but I was born and raised in a small town in California by the name of which is about a 45 minute drive north of Santa Barbara. My parents were from Utah. My dad went to dental school in California and stayed there. And that was a nice upbringing. The Apple Air Valley Parkway or something you have to take to go to Lufthansa. A pair of Blossom Highways, I think what you're referring to off of the I-15. Yeah, that's one way to go. Yeah, kind of wind through that or you can go down and Cucamonga and then come up through Pasadena, through LA. Just depends on what the traffic looks like. You have to right. have your GPS on. I used to go to Pear Blossom all the time, 20 minutes off the dry on. Well, I've made that drive plenty of times in my life. I used to go to Santa Barbara for dive events or dive hunt, with a board, lobster hunts, and scuba dives. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we should talk more of that at some point. My wife you know, was scuba diving when we first started dating. And I had her done a lot of dives, but she certified out there on the Central Coast. And she's from that town as well. And oh, I. So you guys were. We were not high school, school hearts. No, I'm like four years older than her. But I left Lompoc to serve a two year LPS mission in the early 90s. And she kind of was that. When I got home, I served I'm in New York, in New York, Rochester, there. So a lot of LDS church history there. And uh, it's a great place to go. And when I got home, I went to Utah for college and didn't, didn't look back after that, as they say. So, so I'm more of Utah than of California, for sure. That's where my father grew up, is in Los Angeles. And okay. We wound up out here. I never thought I'd be a Utah. But I do have a funny story about that. While I was in college, I think it was 1995 when the announcement was made that Salt Lake had got the Olympics for 2002. And I distinctly remember having the thought in my head, like, oh, I won't be here for that. I'll be back. I graduated. I'll be back to you'll, California. You'll be here for part two. Early on in my banking career. And then, yeah, I guess did they just did. It's 2034. I don't have any yeah, plans. Honestly, either. that's just around the corner. Years. Yeah. We'll I, feel, I still won't be quite Medicare aged, but uh, hopefully I have your Medicare plan. I would expect so. Okay. I'm sure I'll certainly be qualified by then. You're right. Uh, hey. What is it that had the opportunity to get to know Tiffany a bit? Talked about some of her interests and hobbies. I understand yeah, you're tip. a big tennis player. You've mentioned that a couple of times, but you're also yeah. a big Seinfeld fan. Yes, I am. I love tennis. I love sports. My dad was a sport guy and I was the youngest, youngest child. I'm there's the sixth child. I had three older brothers and we all just lived and died by football. That's where my dad went to dental school and yeah, San Francisco Giants baseball. Baseball was my first love. I remember my dad played tennis at the University of Utah back in the 50s. And I remember being on the side of the court. I was pretty young. I was like eight or nine. And just thinking, this sport seems stupid or weird. I throw right-handed, but in baseball, I batted left -handed. And that's similar to a two-handed backhand. I took a rack. I was like, let me try this. I have decent on hand coordination, and I was hitting the ball. My dad was like, you want to try learning it? And I thought a good time to spend with my dad as a young kid yeah. i got the bug about a year later we watched a lot of sports and i remember watching john macker and bjorn board play i was fascinated by their contrast of styles fell in love with it pretty quick pretty avidly from about nine years old to 14. tennis can be a uh, frustrating sport too, like anybody who golfs like many plays individual sports there was a time there where I took a break and, and played the other popular sports, team sports in high school, but had a really good high school experience with, uh, with tennis, good friends, and had the opportunity to play a little bit of junior college before I went on the L LBS mission. After the LBS mission, I was more focused on, I, I wasn't back there to play college, but main level division. No division. But certainly not at BYU where I was going to school. So it's more intramurals. And got away from it, but came back to it. 
Oh, about seven years ago, as my son started playing and I got involved in adult recreation tennis, it's been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of people and I play regularly for the last seven years. It's so something I really like. I like to be active. How did you guys get together and tell me a little bit about your family? Yeah, so Tiffany and I met, I got home from an LDS mission. I went to school, came home after that first school year. The law folks stayed home and started noticing her and we started hanging out a little bit. Yada, yada, yada. Tell the reference. Peter's way. We're married and uh, haven't looked back since. We have two children. A son named Kevin, who's 18 now, and a daughter named Madeline. 16. So she's a sophomore at Sky Ridge High School. Devin is currently serving an LDS mission in Baltimore, Maryland. Graduated from Sky Ridge in point. And I passed down the tennis to him. Probably begrudging to him. He also played football at Sky Ridge and likes all sports as well. So we have a great bond that way. And, and yeah, so Tiffany and I met there in hometown and he is adventurous, always has been blessed to the scuba diving when we first were dating, but he always evolves. And probably for the last 10 years or so, she's been really into being an engineering. She's done a lot of cool things. But even when we first started dating, I, I thought she would do cool things from the scuba standpoint. She's always been into fitness. She was a lifeguard at the local country club pool. She's an activist. You wouldn't think of it, but she, she met before the board, the country to remove the diving board because the pool wasn't deep enough. And so she did a bunch of probably chagrin of patrons also to protect any kind of lawsuits or anything. So she, she's a crowd in the handicap stall. Yeah, right? She's very, but she, she's passionate about something. She goes all in and it's been fun to see that from an eye perspective. And she just joined our chapter a few months ago. She's always reading up and she's, she's always really, on, well, right. Usually. Yeah. But she is, she follows the rules to a T uh, on being out. And you know what? She's been successful because she put the work. Lady who wears my wedding was a member of a BNI chapter. We've both been members here or there across the decades. Okay. Yeah. But at one point we were a member of two and she was always getting more of this and more of that. Maybe I'm just more laissez faire. Maybe she's more fair. I don't know. I certainly think that's the case in your circumstance as well. Yes. Not that you're laissez faire, but she's certainly more fair. I think we can relate to that. Yes. 